Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see you all again this Sunday morning. I want to uh, return to our main theme of washed. And uh, we started off this series by making that comment that in Hebrews, God's purpose was to bring his people into the holy of holies. Now, that is very true. And we made some studies on those who had attained unto the holy of holies, like King David, and uh, also the high priest Joshua. And both of them were not washed. And so, uh, it is basically the problem that when one reaches a certain, shall I say, level in the Lord, one does become careless. And uh, that especially is due to leadership. You know, having attained they feel that they can live, you know, without being circumspect. And the result is many fall. Well, that was one point, one aspect that we had to look at last Sunday. But I want to look at another aspect of the Holy of Holies, And uh, I want to look really at uh, King David again. And uh, King David had a marvelous revelation, marvelous privileges. In uh, 2 Samuel and chapter 7, we find that the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, was in a tent with curtains on Mount Zion. And uh, I'd like to look just at one point with you on this. In verse 18 of uh, Second Samuel chapter 7 Then went King David in and sat before the Lord Now I'm going to develop a theme this morning that there is an onward revelation after attaining to the Holy of Holies Obviously when one is teaching the Ark of the tabernacle or teaching the tabernacle of Moses or the temple of Solomon. One portrays the Holy of Holies as a goal. But uh, there is another aspect that I want to bring out, and that is this. David sat before the Lord. And uh, I'm going now to the Song of Songs and uh, I'm going to take up a theme here of assuming that in the Song of Songs chapter 5 and verse 1 the Lord is coming in to visit the one who is in the Holy of Holies. And we're going to see an onward revelation now of what occurs. Well, first of all, in Song of Songs, chapter 5 and verse 1, he said, I am coming to my God and my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. And we shall notice this 
in subsequent verses that the prime fruit or spices that the Lord goes for is myrrh and that is meekness and it seems to me to be the most important aspect of the Christian character meekness well now in verse 2 the bride is speaking and saying well I'm sleeping but my heart waketh and uh he is saying to her, now open up to me. Open up to me. And I want to take you out into the night. In other words, to minister to those in darkness. But she replies in verse 3, I have put off my coat how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? And uh, there's a grave danger that when living and seeking the life of holiness, one so concentrates on it that one is oblivious to the needs of others. We come into experiences in order to meet the needs of others. And, uh, well, then she rises up and her hands drop with myrrh. Again, myrrh, meekness. And it's sweet smelling myrrh. And then uh, we find in verse 6 that he was gone and she could not find him. And I must confess that I've been in this situation these past weeks whereby I've been seeking the Lord and crying out to him but he has not answered. to the questions that I have put to him. And uh, then uh, in verse 7, she gets her veil snatched away by the watchman, which means she loses her reputation. And sometimes we are brought to that situation where our reputation is taken away from us. Well, then uh, in verse 9, you know, it's not only the bride, but there are many other women and uh, they say, you know, what is your beloved? In other words, why are you seeking Christ above all others? And then uh, she starts to describe Christ. She has a revelation of Christ in a deeper way than she's ever had before. And this is what I feel in the Holy of Holies. You know, uh, I was in the um, tomb in Jerusalem. And I asked the Lord, I said, what do you really want to be known for? And across the place where his body had laid, I saw in white shining lights the word meekness. Well, she gives quite a description of um, the Lord. And uh, 
she says, uh, is the chief among 10,000. In other words, there's no one that compares with him. And I think that's what Apostle Paul said, that I may win Christ. And my experiences in heaven are this. That uh, it's not your beautiful home and so forth, but him. You just want to be with him. We had a, a, a situation occur a number of years ago where a lady um, who was married to someone in the church at that time had a problem in childbirth and she died. And uh, we had the funeral and this, that, and the other. And then uh, in a dream of the night, she appeared unto her sister who was a believer, but not a very uh, on-fire believer, a bit tepid. And this is what she said. She said, I have seen him. That's the whole desire of heaven, to be near to him. And so, as we look at this, in the Holy of Holies, The bride has had a deeper revelation of Christ in that she can describe him in a way that others know him not. And uh, I won't go and exeget all this, but my beloved is white. In other words, pure, ruddy, which means vibrancy. His head is of the most fine gold. And gold speaks of deity. And the corresponding scripture would be the Apostle Paul who said, but we have the mind of Christ. We want to be clothed with his mind. And uh, then in verse 12, remembering that our theme also is being washed, his eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. Now the eyes are the entrance to the body. And the Lord said, if the eyes be light, the whole body is full of light. If they be dark, the body is full of darkness. Now, our eyes, our eyes, you know, we're talking about being washed. And here we have the eyes washed. And washed with milk. And milk is a sincere word of God. And I cannot overemphasize young and old alike how important it is that our eyes be washed. And how are they washed? By reading the word of God. You see, the problem is this, that uh, sin so often starts with someone seeing something that they should not see. That is why we're very particular about pornographic literature because it enters the eyes and it defiles the whole of the body. And so our eyes must be clean. You know, Job said, I have made a commitment or a covenant with my eyes and I will not look on women. Now, eyes are very important. 
Eyes are very important. You see, uh, what are you attracted to, to looking at? Just think for a moment, what attracts you? Do you watch, uh, was it films or things like that? Do they attract you? You know, I read once that the goal of an actor and the goal of a director was that people would see their film and that film would mold their thinking and their life. Well, I don't think there are any good films out there. And so it's, a, it's dangerous watching films. I obviously don't watch films because uh, I cannot risk losing the anointing. But what is the key? Well, it is to wash the eyes. And you wash the eyes through reading the Word of God. The Word of God. And it speaks of the eyes being fitly set. Very interesting that. You know, are our eyes set that we want to read the Word of God? We must be careful what we read. We must be careful what we look at. Because that's going to affect us and can lead us, you know, into committing sin. Because it can develop a desire in our heart. I mean, where does all the money go in business? It goes into advertising. They want people attracted to their products. Well, if their products are good, fine, but if not, you see they're bringing people on the wrong path. All right. Um, and now, verse 13. It speaks of the cheeks, which uh, basically speak of love. You know, when a person's in love, the cheeks, burn sort of thing but um, that isn't my point here his lips like lilies dropping sweet smelling myrrh again this theme of myrrh it occurs consistently when uh, speaking of the Lord Jesus Myrrh. And in Zephaniah chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3, it speaks of the fact that we should seek meekness and seek righteousness. And meekness, of course, is the interpretation of myrrh. And so I, I cannot overemphasize that. You know, it says in Zephaniah 2 verses 1 to 3, Seek meekness, seek righteousness, you may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. You know, it's easier to be righteous than it is to be meek. And uh, I think that's especially true for a man. But meekness, meekness. You know, if your character is straight and upright, when you really need to know, well, what is right, and we'll do it, that's it. But meekness, 
Oh, my, 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 my. It's not that we just don't react to when people do something or situations. But it's how we speak and so forth. And so there you are. And uh, then again in verse 16, his mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. As you know, Jesus said, he that keepeth my commandments is my friend. And we want to be a friend of Jesus. Well, chapter 6 then goes off to look at the bride. And um, I just want to bring out one or two thoughts on the bride here. Because she is going to be depicted as an army. So the Holy of Holy experience will develop our warlike tendencies in the, as it were in the spiritual sense. I want to look at something with you. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Terza. Now Terza was the capital of the uh, ten rebellious tribes. And then it says, Comely as Jerusalem, they are the faithful ones. And it's as though the army of God will be made up of the backslider and the faithful one. Terrible as an army with banners. An army with banners simply means they have had victory after victory after victory. Well, we look now some of the comments about the bride. And uh, in verse 6, we have the thought of washing. Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing. Now, with the bridegroom, the eyes, the washing of the eyes. But with the bride, the washing of the sheep and uh, basically that means the garments she was wearing. And those two things are very important indeed. That we wash our garments. You know, I was in Washington, D.C. with uh, a number of the brethren and uh, there was one of the speakers at that time of the House of Representative. In other words, number three in the hierarchy of the government. And uh, the Lord started speaking to me about him. He said, I raised him up to be a righteous emblem or leader in this country and then the Lord opened my eyes and said but how can I use him with filthy garments and uh, I understood that these garments were the garments of adultery and uh, it wasn't long before all that came out. Well, you know, our garments, our garments, Joshua the high priest, take away the filthy garments. He's the high priest. He should have clean garments. 
but he didn't. And we must never presume that like the book of Proverbs it says, the generation who are pure in their own eyes. Lord, you show me. I'm reminded of uh, a lady that uh, I knew in Switzerland and she was from Sweden and uh, she was a pastor in the United States. But anyway, this is uh, what she said. She said, uh, I was in a convention in Sweden and I was seated on the platform and uh, the speaker was speaking so eloquently about the second coming. And then she said, my eyes were opened to see his garments, his spiritual garments. And they were spotted with the flesh. And then she cried out, O oh Lord, show me mine. You know, I'm sure that dear preacher, as he preached so eloquently on the second coming of the Lord, thought he was in blazing glory but not in the sight of God. And, uh, you know, we have mirrors, don't we? And those mirrors will show us in the natural, you know, whether our hair is right or garments are right and so forth. And uh, James speaks of the fact now the word of God is like a mirror. It shows us who we are. And so we must ask the Lord, Lord, show me my eyes and show me my garments. We don't want to be fooled. You know, at the end of our life, we arrive before the Lord and he's saying, well, look, this, that, and the other. You know, uh, I had a friend whose, um, shall I say, forte was the restoration books. And uh, you'll often find that people, you know, graduate to certain books. Anyway. He graduated to the restoration books and he was a kind of a professor in Bible colleges and that's what he taught. And then he cried out to the Lord one day because he himself was going through what I might say turmoil concerning his own life. And uh, he came to um, Joshua, the high priest, you know, Zechariah chapter 3. And he said, Lord, why did you wait so long before you dealt with those garments of his? The Lord replied, because he did not ask me before. So in one sense, it does depend upon us as to how God deals and cleanses us. You know, the more often we come before the Lord and say, Lord, show me, please, my spiritual condition and wash me, the quicker the work is going to be done. But I thought that was very interesting. You know, he had not asked me before. Well, I just want to come to a, a closing here. And um, verse 10.
the women are looking upon the bride and say that she is looking forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, terrible as an army with banners. In other words, she was full of light. And uh, then they say in verse 13, I'm jumping over a few verses because my purpose is not to uh, exegete the Song of Songs, but rather put this before you. You see, the Holy of Holies. You know, let us make that our goal, get into the Holy of Holies. What then did King David do? He sat before the Lord. And you know, don't let us make the mistake of uh, the Lord desiring us to minister and we say, oh no, I'm too holy to do that. No, you can lose very easily what you have by refusing to go on with the Lord. Our spiritual condition is ever governed by our walk, present tense, with the Lord. And uh, here in verse 13, the response is, well, she's like an army, a company of two armies. Well, that's whom uh, Jacob met before he was going to face Esau. He saw a company of two armies. I'm going to give you, shall I say, an interpretation of that. The spiritual and the natural. And in a certain sense, we have to uh, triumph and be victorious in the natural things, but we also have to be triumphant in the spiritual things. So to conclude this morning, I just want to emphasize this point, which is very important indeed. You know, washing, that is our theme. Washing our eyes, washing our garments. And let us not assume that they are clean. But let us ask the Lord to show us how he sees us. The speaker of the house. Oh, was a dominant figure, this particular one. Speaking to the nation about righteousness. But he himself was in the eyes of the Lord unrighteous. And he'd probably been horrified to have known that. Although it's true and it came out in the press. No. I believe God wants to wash us thoroughly and we come to the Holy of Holies. That is not the end. That is a new chapter in our book of life where we sit before the Lord and the Lord reveals himself in a new way, in a new way, in a new way. And, uh, you know, the Lord revealing himself in a new way means that that virtue will be imparted to us. And the more we have of Jesus, the better it will be. Amen. And to be like him, you know, is in this instance, have our eyes washed. To have our head of gold, the mind of deity. 
and also the bride to have the garments washed so that she's just full of light. May that be our goal and let's move on in the Lord and let us see that in the Holy of Holies there is fresh revelation of Jesus. God bless you. And don't forget the virtue that attracts him and the bride more than anything else is meekness. And so let us measure in that too. God bless you. Thank you.